สวัสดีครับ Good evening, welcome to Thai PBS English News Service. I'm Super John Clint Swan. Now, in a process of developing peace near the disputed area of the Prabhir Temple on the Thai-Cambodian border, patrol police of both countries will replace soldiers based near the ancient temple as mandated by the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice's ruling on July the 18th, 2011, stated that soldiers, Thai and Cambodian, should temporarily vacate the disputed area within a year of the ruling. Some 250 border police will be deployed from Pa Moi Dang to Pratul Lek near the disputed area. The Minister of Defense says Thailand's sovereignty over existing Thai territory will not be affected, as this is a temporary move in line with the ICJ's orders. Yet, police being deployed in the area must still coordinate with soldiers deployed there previously because Thai intelligence agencies claim there are live anti-personal mines buried in the area. Over the border, some 255 Cambodian police and 100 conservation rangers were reported to have replaced the 500 army troops deployed in the zone. Cambodian Defense Minister Thie Ban was quoted as saying that he is happy to withdraw troops and replace them with police. The dispute surrounding jurisdiction over the 900-year-old Pravihir Temple has lasted since the 1950s, when the then colonial power France pulled out of Cambodia. In 1962, the ICJ decided that the temple belongs to Cambodia, despite the main entrance being in Thailand. The possession of the 4.6-kilometer plot of land to the west of the temple is what Thailand and Cambodia have been arguing about until now. Foreign Ministry sources told Thai PBS that it is considered a smart move for Thailand to follow the court's orders and remove soldiers as the final verdict on who has the rights over the 4.6-kilometer disputed area should be announced sometime late next year. And there are now outbreaks of hand, foot and mouth disease in some northeastern provinces as well as in Bangkok. But authorities say that the situation is not yet an emergency. The Disease Control Bureau Division 9 reported that in the northern northeastern region, 473 people have contracted hand, foot and mouth disease. The province with the highest number of infections is Pisanu Lok, with 176 patients. Doctors say that the patients are of all ages and present with non-specific symptoms. Meanwhile, in the far northeast, Ubon Ratchatani province has recorded outbreaks in 22 of its 25 districts. So far, 380 38 people have been infected, but so far, there have been no reported fatalities. Down in the south, Nakhonsi Thamarat province, one school has finally reopened after closing down to allow for disinfection after three students contracted the illness. However, parents are still unconvinced that the school is safe, so many students are still staying home. Meanwhile, in Bangkok, the Ministry of Public Health reports that hand, foot and mouth disease is not yet presenting a serious threat. There have been only 322 recorded cases, not much higher than last year's figures. The majority of the victims are infants and children under the age of four. Up to 20 school children were found to be infected, so 22 schools have been shut down since the beginning of the school term in late May. However, 19 of those schools have now reopened and authorities are hopeful that the outbreak will be controlled within the next two to three months. For now, students in schools are taught and encouraged to regularly wash their hands, dishes, utensils, and even their toys with soap. And following the Constitution Court's dismissal of five petitions against the government's charter rewrite, the court's verdict and opinions of individual judges will be published, published within 15 days. In the meantime, the cabinet has called for a suspension of the third reading of the amendment bill until recommendations from the Council of State are received. The legal unit of the Constitution Court revealed that it has finished reviewing the central ruling, which is to be deliberated upon the Constitution Court meeting on July the 25th. The central verdict will then be handed back to the office of the Constitution Court and will be published to the public within 15 days. The full text will also be published for the public to read. Pimon Thamma Pitakpong, head spokesperson of the Constitution Court, noted that the court's injunction was actually self-explanatory in that the charter change is within the jurisdiction of the legislature. However, Apisit Wei Cha Chiwa, opposition leader, indicated that the prime minister, as head of the executive branch and the petitioner for the amendment, should clearly demonstrate that she will abide by the Constitution Court's verdict. The opposition leader's comments came after core red shirt leaders campaigned to press ahead with the third reading of the amendment bill. 
In response, Warawat Ua Pinyakun government whip predicted that changing the charter is likely to take a long time to bear fruit, regardless of how it is to be done. He said that a clearer direction will be developed at the Puyatai Party seminar at the end of this month. Yet, Jaren Chan Komon, Deputy House Speaker, indicated at the meeting between MPs and senators who are in support of the government's constitution rewrite bill, the belief was that amending its article by article is better than overhauling the entire charter. The bill should therefore pass through the third reading in the next parliamentary session, which starts on August the 1st. Meanwhile, the controversial and much criticized national reconciliation bills remain stalled in Parliament. Fugitive former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat, who is known to be an influential figure within the Pua Thai Party, told the media in Jakarta, Indonesia, that amnesty and forgiveness are the key to end Thailand's ongoing political turmoil. I a committee to study the details of how we can do reconciliation. And they invite private sector government bodies, political parties, to, to give the advice, including International Chamber of Commerce. They all suggest that it's long overdue for Thailand to bring about legislation. Everybody says the same thing, that legislation must include amnesty and healing. I would think, I, I, I would suggest that you know, every party in Thailand have to detach from what happening in the past and learn to forgive. If you don't learn to forgive, why don't you look back in the old days? I just been in Hiroshima. 140,000 people died now from atomic bomb. But they know how to forgive. And now they become a very close alliance with the U.S. You have to move in every, uh, 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 every aspect must be moved at the same time. Justice must be there. Uh, the uh, healing must be there. The uh, fact-finding must be there. And uh, the sense of forgiveness must be there. So everything must be at the same time. And following the closure and reconstruction of the eastern runway at Swanapoom Airport, AOT officials now say the international airport will be back in full service on July the 31st, ahead of the original schedule. The AOT will also be calling in civil engineers to x-ray the runway structure in an effort to boost airlines' confidence. Since its closure in mid-June, 80% of the east runway has now been repaired, leaving only 700 meters remaining to be fixed. The AOT claims the runway can now serve any aircraft except the Airbus A380. The runway will be 100% ready by the end of this month, earlier than the early August deadline. Anirudh Thanom Kulabut, head of the AOT, boasted that this latest fix will last at least six years before another renovation is needed. The AOT is hiring engineering companies to x-ray the newly fixed runway to check that it is fully ready for service. This is part of the effort to boost airline confidence. Meanwhile, the Civil Aviation Department says that it will check twice a day for cracks and subsidence to make sure that Sonapum's runway reaches international standards. The Engineering Institute of Thailand expressed concerns over that the construction designs of the government's water management projects remain vague and lacking in detail. These projects are worth 300 billion baht. Furthermore, some qualifications are even claimed to be designed to keep Thai construction companies away from this very large cake. Suwat so Chaupri Cha, president of the Engineering Institute of Thailand, or EIT, revealed the fact that the government's terms of reference, or TOR, are published in Thai, but still allow foreign companies to submit their construction designs. He says this is worrisome because any mistakes in the translations could jeopardize the construction efforts. Furthermore, the list of qualifications for construction design companies to meet is only eight pages long and thus does not reflect detailed engineering aspects such as environmental and health assessments or cost control. Suwatana Jit Lolakan of the EIT's committee responsible for water engineering noted that by picking only design firms that have experience similar to that required by the government's 300 billion baht water management projects, many local companies will be prevented from bidding. 
And while North America and Europe struggle economically, Asian countries are slowly but surely becoming the world's economic powerhouse. The success behind this rise seems to be down to the great leadership and stable environment. Kun Rungtip Chonapalai spoke to Professor Michael Yusim, director of the Center for Leadership and Change Management at the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania. Uncertainty, uh, even a, maybe an element of fear that with the loss of the, of the uh, value of the Thai baht, that it may take three or four years to dig out of the, uh, the economic slowdown. It took less time than that. Mm. And since then, Thailand has been on a roll. And I see it, I feel it, I witness it, I know it's here. Mm. And um, of course, um, for, for, that, for Thailand to move forward as a part of um, AEC, the ASEAN Economic Community in 2015, we have also to compete with ASEAN with ourselves and also to be able to um, level you know, up to, with the world. I think that what kind of change that has to, to be done here? I think this is true. The leaders of industry have, again, they've read Peter Drucker. They know the principles of effective management from some of the great gurus of uh, the Western canon. At the same time, they have picked and selected out what works here, mm -hmm. but they've not tried to be Jack Welsh or Steve Jobs. They've done it their own way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be the future of countries or companies in countries in this region. Mm -hmm. Learn from the best worldwide. Watch how Toyota does it. Mm -hmm. Watch how Southwest Airlines does it, one of our great airlines. Yeah. On the other hand, don't mimic. Mm -hmm. Draw from, use create your own leadership path. And it's no secret in the medical profession that Thailand has some of the best trained nurses in the world. Because of their high standards, nursing schools such as Chualungon and Mahidon universities attract students from across the region, including China, Singapore, and the Maldives, and even Malaysia. One such student is Naria Yo, a Cambodian nursing teacher enrolled in Chualungon University's master's degree program for nursing. The reason why I choose nursing in Chulalongkorn because as we all know, Chulalongkorn is one of the prestigious university in Thailand. It's not just well known in Asia, but it's also recognized in our uh, international country. And I'm so lucky and fortunate to be able to pass a scholarship and I really wanted to study in this school, university. Yes. Narina says that nursing qualifications in Thailand are at a higher standard than those in her home country of Cambodia. She finds this evident in the level of education Thai nursing schools offer. As a nursing teacher, her key goal is to learn as much from Thailand so that she can improve and update knowledge of medical care in Cambodia. Because um, I'm also one of the nurse educator. I am a teacher back in my country. Even though I look young, but uh, I've been teaching in my country before I came here. So the thing that I'm going to do first to develop in my country is to bring all the knowledge that I've studied here and bring it back to teach my students. Yes, and especially in the clinical area as well. The reason Thailand's nurses are so well trained is because the schools that admit them have very high standards. The Dean of Nursing at Chulalongkorn University says that in order to enroll in a nursing master's degree course at the university, one must have work experience as well as the right credentials. For example, on the Faculty of Nursing's website, application requirements for a master's degree course include a Bachelor of Nursing GPA of no less than 3.25 and a nursing or midwifery license. Once enrolled, students have the choice of training for pediatrics, geriatrics, general medicine, psychology, research, or theory. They are also taught nursing ethics. With standards as high as these, it's no doubt that the 8,000 nursing graduates qualifying per year emerge as some of the best in Asia. But because they're so sought after, Thai nurses often choose to work in international or private hospitals instead of working at a Thai public hospital, which work longer hours for less pay. Currently, there are 130,000 nurses taking care of the Thai population of 65.4 million. In other words, 
there is one nurse for every 400 potential patients. The rate at which nurses are rapidly abandoning the public health care system means that within 10 years, Thailand will need 33,000 more nurses. Until then, Thai authorities will have to protect and improve the status of nursing in order to avoid serious shortage of these vital care providers. And that's all the time we have for tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Super Drunk Lin Suan. Sorry,